Thousand Oaks Family YMCA in San Antonio, Texas. For the very last event of 2016. And we have a special guest commentator this weekend. Timothy Baghurst is on the microphone. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. Great to be here. My first WRT event and last one of the year, which means that usually it's special because awards are given and everybody comes to this one to try and get one last competition before the Christmas break. see Landa on the WRT so the style you can see there really smart play to start this match. He was here a lot earlier than his competitor getting ready and you can see on the court he's ready to go. What is it WRT he usually wins he has seven WRT titles including his defending the 2015 Olympic titles when Lonnie does come, he shakes things up on the WRT. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is fun though because you know, you know, you play on the WRT, which means that the seat is a little lower than it maybe it should be. And as a result, that means that we get some great quarterfinal matchups like we have today. Or one of the interesting things that I've experienced, we play with a black ball here. You see, my experience is on the international stage where we play with the pro pen green, and there's a, a big contrast in the balls. And the black ball is a little bit slower than the green, and so it can suit those like Andre who are a little bit more player rather than power. So we'll see if you can use that. Pretty solid start. As you mentioned, Tim, Londa was here much more in advance than his competitor, Andre Pena. Yeah, I think that's got to work against Pena right now, maybe not being fully Yeah, he didn't have the time he needed to warm up properly this morning. Um, to to the court. So that just means that he's a little bit, there's a big skip, slow getting started. And he needs to be in the opposite position because he's playing somebody who, even though on paper isn't the favorite, is the defending champion here. So you need every advantage you can get, and this advantage to start, but now he's down 6-1. Might be a time for a timeout, yeah. 
Tim, the predictor of all timeouts, predicting Andre's timeout. All right, on cue. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. This is the World Racquetball Tour. We're back in the first quarterfinal of the 2016 WRT Alamo City Open. We are talking a little bit about preparedness. We mentioned that Andre Padilla was late for this match, and Alex Landa seeming really comfortable in this room. Tim, what are some things that pros and players need to do in order to be prepared for the match? Yeah, one of the things that the <laughs> take care of or they should consider to be a little bit more is when they wake up. to eat a good okay. breakfast at least a couple of hours before you play. Well, and see. a lot of players may see they sleep in, oh no, I gotta get to the courts, I'm just gonna eat a granola bar, or nothing at all sometimes. And the reality is that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Breakfast, if you break it down, is breaking the fast. And so your body needs energy to perform at this level. And if you're relying on energy that you acquired the night before, that's gonna be insufficient. So you need to be up early, you need to have a good breakfast. I, personally, I believe you need to be at the court at least half an hour, if not an hour before, to make sure that you have everything there to mentally prepare for what you're going to do, rather than focusing on, am I gonna get there on time? Is my car gonna start? There's all kinds of things that happen that you don't prepare for. I forgot my outside of your control. I forgot my water bottle. And oh, I don't have time to go get, to go get some water. So it's just making that habit of being there in, in advance. And it was, it, it kind of shows the professionalism of Landa, who was here early, who warmed up, seated over in the corner by himself. You see, he's up 6-2. And, you know, maybe Andre gets back in this first game. Maybe he doesn't. If he doesn't, you could say, well, you know, you were down 6-1 to start the match. Yeah, so I'm hearing Lots of good sleep, planning out your breakfast, getting here on time. People take for granted, and it's very important to work on your mental strength as well. Your own coach, your own cheerleader, energized out on the court. And it's a good thing. Andrea is actually one of the more professional players. I know he really trains hard. Central Deportivo. Is very aware of his nutrition. He's a well-rounded player, so I think it's just a matter of ironing out some of those details for yourself. Well, a lot of that should be credit to his dad, who is also his coach. And when you're at home with him, things are a lot different than when you're on the road and dad. You are waking you up, whatever it is. It's it's a case of transitioning from that junior. Where he's been very successful at, at the world level to, okay, you're not in the juniors anymore. You've got to be responsible for your travel, your hotel, your nutrition, and it's it's a lot of work for these young players. Yeah, it's a big responsibility. Well, Andre Padilla now with a couple points to close the gap again. Two different playing styles that we're going to see in this match as well. Landa has good control and he has, I would say, more power than Andre Padilla. Sure there's an example on that serve that flew across, but just short. Yeah, Landa is a very high percentage player. He plays very intelligently, he has a lot of power, but he, he doesn't try to take high risk shots that much, whereas Padilla, he, he likes the pinch a lot, especially on the forehand. You'll see him try that forehand pinch a lot. And so, it'll be interesting to see this is gonna come true. There's an example of that pinch. Um, Londa will try and keep Paria in the back. Paria wants to take that pinch somewhere up around where he's standing right now. If he can do that, chances are he's gonna come out the winner. But Londa, high percentage player, usually the high percentage the shot maker. Nice touch from Landa in the front for a side out. Six serving five. Nice angle on that front kick. 
camera Campeon. view, you can see Andre's between the legs shot. Cinco, He's hitting it right back seis. to that front wall. Of course, we hope you at home are enjoying that front angle camera. Something new that we want to keep carrying through to 2017. And there you can see Andre, he really loves his pinches, but he's taking them up where he's standing right now, around the encroachment line service box, and that's where he wants to finish the point. Londa's got to get him into the backcourt here. We're all tied to 6-6. Six, six. Oh, but he's warmed up on that forehand pinch. First one a little bit high, Londa got it back. Second one. Corrects that mistake. Now he takes the lead. So, what would the score have been had he been here warmed up and been playing like this from the start of the match? 6 1 down. He's now up 7, serving 6. Andre Padilla is currently ranked number 3 on the WRT. You can find those rankings. WorldRacquetballTour.com. It's a very exciting finish to the to the tour itself, given that I think he's is about four points, six points behind yeah, Jaime Marquez. So a lot depends on how this finish in this tournament, who determines you know who's second or third on the tour at the end of the season. So it's kind of exciting for these players and for us. Yeah. Something that's interesting about the way that the rankings work for the WRT is that we work on this weekend last year. We were in Monterrey. Andre Padilla and Jaime Martel met each other. Andre Padilla winning his first ever WRT title last year, 2015. He stands to lose a lot of points, and so does Jaime. But Jaime a little bit more since he had won, and they were both finalists. So you're right, this weekend will come down to every bit will count for these guys with Andre only four points behind Martel. And I suspect Andre is ruining his seating in this tournament as number three because he's facing Landa in the time they might on pace a slightly easier draw later today. Siete, siete. We have some tough matches coming up. Oh, it's looking like a good matchup. It's well, there's a good example of what Landa has to do. He played smart. He kept Paria in the backcourt, waited for his chance to really go for it, and put it down. Now he's up 8-7. from Faria. Notice though, at least on that angle, you can see that his forehand is a lot more powerful than his backhand on the, still powerful, but the camera shook when he hit that forehand, not so much on the backhand. So if you're Faria, you want to hit it to Landa's backhand. Maybe, it's part of your strategy. Good serve, good shot. Good yeah. Seven. Yeah, that's true. Less power doesn't mean less effective, as we see as he scores his 10th point. As the old adage goes, Laura. This is true. Well, Londa wanted two bounces there, but it looked like it was still a, a one bounce. It's going to be the side out for.
That's her seven. Yes. Timeouts for Point call the voidable hinder, penalty hinder. Point. It's a correct call. Eleven seven. Looks like everybody is not arguing. He's going to agree with that. It's eleven seven. Set up. Airport. Andre Pettyev calling the timeout. We'll be right back in just a few moments with more of Game 1. This is the WRT. We're back in the first quarter final, and I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone about the Player Awards, the 2016 WRT Year End Awards, as we always end it here in San Antonio, Texas, where we have the fans vote on things like the Most Improved Player, the Rookie of the Year, and the Sportsmanship Award. And of course, you can write in your favorite WRT player. You can do that at bit.ly backslash WT WRT awards because those of you that don't know, so we have Andre Padilla who Alejandro called Lava that timeout as he's in the service box. It's seven serving 11. Alex Landa defending. And I would encourage you to, to fill out those awards. I got mine in yesterday. Uh, it's an opportunity for fans like us to, to have our Especially the Sportsmanship Award, I appreciate that just because it's something we need to promote as a professional tour uh, to those who are watching and also to the juniors. You need to understand that there is some sportsmanship in professional sports and there should be. That's right. We base it on fair play, integrity, and gen your general attitude towards your opponent. Those are a lot of the values that the WRT embraces, and so we love to see that reflected in our players and encourage that through all levels of play. Good pick up from Landa. Oh, another great get. Separate from Padilla. And okay. down the line winner for okay. Alex Landa. So one of the interesting things on Landa's get that's important to note is what he did with it. He got it but he made something happen that forced Andre into the back of the court. And a lot of times we get a ball, hey, take another shot, as opposed to getting back into And there it is. I mean, it's just great racquetball. Pass, 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 keeping on straight in the back. I think he's hit maybe one or two pinches the entire match. It's just smart racquetball, really smart racquetball. You saw, though, he ran around to hit it on his forehand, kind of as a tennis player does, to, because that's his favorite shot is the forehand. And a foot fault there, but missed by our official. There's another ace for Alex Landa, 13-8. So here's a situation where he hasn't pinched it a lot once or twice in the match. And so what that does is Andre starts to think, okay, I need, just need to stay in the back of the court. Then you mix it up the court, and he's completely taken by so that shot selection. A lot of these players can hit every shot, very high percentage, but it's which shot do you hit at which moment that often determines whether somebody's more successful than others. Nice, 
the ramp. So. And Andre keeping it simple and going down the line when he has Londa in front of the court. Yeah, but really, Londa hit a, a low percentage. He went above the shoulder, tried to pinch it out on the left side. That's what got him in trouble. I think he's regretting that shot above all the others. What was I thinking? High right percentage was working. Point. And maybe that's why it was game point. Oh, I'll go for something different. Shot. Beautiful Got forehand you. pinch for a side out. Game point number two. A birthday, also. get to face it has been raining quite a lot in san antonio this week we are at the thousand oaks family ymca we'd like to give them a big thank you for hosting us this weekend we'll take a quick moment to thank our sponsors as well including splathead and gulf coast racquetball also the alamo city racquetball association and of course the ymca and of course Gearbox so, with a new ball, a lot of times it's a little cooler than the ball they've got. And even if you hit it around a few times, it's not going to be at the same temperature. So one of the things that you have to recognize with a new ball is that it's going to be a little bit slower. So you have to hit it a little bit harder. You see Londa skip two. And I wonder, with the other ball, they may not have been skipped because they're warm. So they travel faster. So you have to take that into account. Maybe a couple ceiling balls just to become familiar with it helps in that situation. Good shot. for Landa and now his third game. 14, serving nine. here for Andre and might give him a little bit of yes. momentum even if he doesn't win game one gives him a little bit of momentum that he's still in this but it's not over one point at a time it's probably a good call there replay no argument for the players serve when he does have the option to hit that drive serve on the serve. Serve. 14. It works for him switching that up too. It's 11-14. Coming up after this, our second quarter final of the day will feature David Bobby Horn versus Rodrigo Montoya. This should be a pretty good So it was 14-8. Here it is, 12-14. Honda has a couple timeouts. Yeah, that's right. He hasn't used a timeout yet. This is getting a little too close. Let's see if he can finish this point. Good defense from Andre. Oh, but well, that's better. And you saw he took a little pace off that one. And so it slowed the ball down as opposed to staying high towards but the ball. Say, ball say. So let's see if we can close this out. Fourth game point for Alex Lamba. Good 
Saved, which means that he's gained four points in a row here. 12 14. 12 14. Andre playing a lot of defense, keeping. Again, Alex is a clean hitter. Keeps the ball low, 14, hits 12. the corners, and that's just his game. Fifth game point for Alex Lama. Yeah, thank you. Can Andre just fighting it off? Well, it off. Landa's really going for that drive serve and it's coming Twelve, off the 14. back wall. No, you used so. two already. No more, no less. Andre Padilla with Twelve, four fourteen. Amounts. He already used his two. You have two for each game. That rule had changed in September of this year. You can see those rules of WRT plays by the IRF rules, which you can find at International Racquetball. Oh, here's number six. It's another. There's a forehand reverse bench. Able to close it out. 15-12, Alex Landa on the fifth game point, closing out game one over Andre Padilla. We'll be right back with more of game two, so don't go anywhere. Now we have game two. Oh, yeah. right back. Right back. No, 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 no. Tim Baghurst is joining me on the mic today. Giving a little bit of color to our commentating. And San Antonio. He's down the line from Andre. Laura, from the international perspective, I know several of these players who compete for their country or have competed at the junior level as well. Many of these have come up through the juniors, but some I've never met before, so it's been a great experience meeting some of these for the first time, getting to know some of these players on the tour, and seeing the camaraderie that they all have with each other, and even though they're fierce competitors on the court, they're friends off the court, and it makes it tough sometimes when you're friends off the court and you have to play each other fairly frequently in situations. But Landa, not always on the tour, so, not the guy who hangs around with everyone else throughout the year, and that makes it a different environment for Andre, but he's still got to play somebody who he's known for many years in Mexico. That's right, Lando was playing on the Mexico doubles team this year at the Pan American Racquetball Championships. And I believe they do train in the same facility. He was in junior World Championships training with his girlfriend, Paula Longoria during the week, as was Andre. So. That's right. Alex Landa is based out of El Paso, so we see him training a lot in Juarez. So he travels around to a lot of tournaments. He definitely travels yeah. is based in uh, San Luis Potosí, right? So he may spend some time there. Yeah. Well. And that La Loma uh, training facility is pretty outstanding, where Andre Padilla Trains out of it. Fast shots from La 
Yep. You can see that Paia is frustrated because he's trying to compete with Landa's power. They're both hitting it as hard as they can. Just a little bit harder. Good pick up from Landa. Two defensive shots give him an offensive shot, but Paia with the defense. So you're seeing he's mixing in that pinch now. Early in the, the first game, pass, 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 pass. Then we started to see him start to switch and mix it up. Now he's keeping Andre back to front, back to front. That should be a second serve. I don't think our Brennan Jennings you know, is a local and may not know all of the IRA rules. Once the ball is released, that's the initiation of a serve. So if you catch it, it's an automatic second serve. Nice shot. Like maybe Andre had kind of told him to hold it or, or stop or something. It doesn't matter. It's but wouldn't you have to look back at your opponent? If your opponent's not ready, it's still your fault. So exactly. That would be Tremendous shot there from Landa above the shoulder. He's starting to feel it a little bit more. He's relaxed. That was above the shoulder forehand pinch. Patient that situation, waited for his opportunity, and then it was two serving three. three. It's two serving three. Two. We saw a lot of momentum shifts in game one. We expect to see the same thing in game two. Point. Good shot there from Andre. Again, look at the position he was on the court. Up here, three. Beyond the encroachment line, pushing forward. He was able to do whatever he wanted in that situation. That's where he wants to be when he takes his shots. Good shot. Tough shot, Great, good. Tough shot. Really Point. nice. Off the back glass. That puts Maria in the lead now, 4-3. So down 3-0, up 4-3. Four, three. Four, three. It's a game of runs in this match for sure. It is. We're seeing that a lot so far this morning. Andre, Laura, the, you know, the use of timeouts, you have them, you might as well use them. Uh, you've heard me talk about the percentages of winning the rally after a timeout. And at least with the ones, some of the seniors I work with as well, you don't want to let three or four points go before you start thinking about that timeout because you need to break that momentum. And you don't want to be in a position where you, you're too far away. You're down 10 yeah, there's a bit of timing involved in feeling out when it's appropriate to call that time out. When the momentum Quattro. shifted, Quattro. your opponent is starting to take control. The value that these players have when they play internationally, they have their coach in their corner, maybe thinking about those things. In these situations, it's all on the player. Nobody behind them giving them advice, watching what's going on, making suggestions, offering timeouts. So for those of you who coach, it's very important that you teach your players to coach themselves as well, rather than just dictating everything they do all the time when they're playing. Yeah, I think that's a good point about how racquetball is a little different from especially being a, an individual sport um, in that your coach doesn't travel with you, so therefore it's a little more unique and you have to <laughs> Four, 
Warriors throw to five. Couple points for Landa, four or five. Not going away from this Nick Lob. There's an example of Faria really jumping on that and attacking. Very difficult shot to execute. He did that very well indeed. Yeah, he handles those difficult shots very well. He's a unique player. Like he loves those pinches. What? Yeah, he, he mixes things up, changes the speed of his shots. He's a clever player. And, you know, he may not be the hardest hitter, but you don't necessarily have to be if you're able to use what you're given. Put a wayward from him there, and Landa made him pay. Five serving six. This is a close second game. This is what we like to see in our last event of the year. I think that's one thing that you can always count on on the WRT is some competitive matches and the players. There's so much talent and variety on the tour. These players really mix it up. We have Alex Landa with seven WRT titles under his belt. He's defending the 2015 Alamo City Open Championship title. Andre Pagano has two WRT titles. His first one ever was last year, exactly one year ago this Big weekend at the 2015 Monterey Open. And he just won in September at the Atlanta Open. We've also had five. Another thing I do love about is the number of tiebreakers. They're always exciting matches each time there's a tournament. We saw one yesterday. Unfortunately, it was yesterday and not today where Bobby Horn won with 15, 14, 14, 15, 11, 10 in a, round, in a round of 16. So expect some great excitement today. Of course, I'm going to curse it and we're not going to have any tiebreakers. But that's one of the things I love because the matchups are always different. and You never know which player is going to win. Stay safe. It's all tied up, 6-6. Six, six. Nice wow, big swing up. from Alex Lunda in the back of the court. Yeah, that Nick Lobb, you saw the bounce was different. It didn't Stay cut safe. across to the middle and allowed Lunda to really get his backhand swing behind it. And that ball coming right back to Landa in the center. In the yes, yes, yes. Fancy to win that. Good shot. That's what I was. Roll out from Andre Padilla from the side out. Safe. That's yes, yes. there from Andre. You can see his disappointment as he walked to the, walk to the back of the court. Seven, seven, six. Disagreement here. Play on the serve. Wet ball on the serve. On any surface or the serve, wet ball. Is there a wet ball on any surface or just the serve? Wet ball in the rally. Looks like they're talking on any about or just the serve. The wet ball. Just the service. They're asking 
if there's a wet ball on just the server on any surface, and it should be on any surface. Yeah. So any surface, there's a wet ball, then it's a replay. So anytime there's a web ball, it's a replay. That's what they were asking about out on the court. Looks like they will get the replay. Yeah, so there, in the IRF rules, there are no designated court hinders. If there were designated court hinders, we'd have to go around and pick and choose which ones were court hinders. Just in case of their, the referee has the right to designate court hinders when they happen. And so a wet ball can be that situation. It doesn't just have to be on the serve. If so, a lot of times you'll see the players though lean on the back glass. Well, they're all sweaty, no, 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 and that. so the ball hits the back glass and slides no, off. Well, if it's only on the serve, oh no, sorry, that's not a, a court hinder. No, 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 stop, 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 yo. No. The official is screaming at them for about 10 shots for encroachment, but neither player could hear him. Yeah, he's hitting the glass too, but neither of them could hear him, so that's unfortunate. That's a lot of wasted energy on that. Thank you, Zone Violation. Point. 9 6. It's 9 6. There was a point. Hari is getting a little bit frustrated. Wild. Make a good shot. There's good shot. one. You saw he had his feet set. That's the one he wanted. Takes his timeout. I think this is a good timeout for Andre. As you said, he needs to get a little bit of control. And let's see if he can do that in this timeout. You're watching the World Racquetball Tour. Well, this is the last WRT event of 2016, and I mentioned earlier, Tim, that we had five different champions in the last five WRT events, so I'll take a quick minute to run those down and give these guys that recognition. Back in May, we had the Midwest Championship where Alex Cardona defeated David Bobby Horn for his 11th title. Alex Cardona is currently the WRT player with the most titles. Then at the Sonora Open, Guti uh, Polo Gutierrez won. That was in April. In September, Andre Perilla won the Atlanta Open. And then Rodrigo Montoya won the Pleasanton Open in Six October. Days, and Jaime Martel won the last WRT event in the first weekend of November at the Rock. Good shot. Set up. 9.36. So that timeout, statistically, not going the way that we expected it to. Um, nothing earned there. For Alex. There's a sign out for Alex. That was a bit ugly from both players there, kind of pushing at the ball in the front court. Finally, Baria able to get the side out. He's down by three. He's down by a game. It's all or nothing right now. Shot. Here's that forehand pinch. It's his favorite. As soon as he's up there about half court, if I'm playing him, that's Seven, what I'm looking nine. for. I'm moving up already because he's going to hit that more often than not. Once you start anticipating it, it forces him to do something different. Maybe he starts to make some mistakes. Good shot. Good cross court. Good Ran over to his forehand side, hit it to the Watch left. Two quick points in a row for Andre Padilla. Eight serves nine. No, 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 no. Like a serve. Nice shot. Wow, tough shot there no, no. from Landa, but it was nice on his eight. forehand. He plays the forehand side on doubles. It's clearly his favorite side. So Andre maybe trying to change it up. 
hit that second serve over to him. Got punished for yeah. it. Eight serve nine. Wanda hasn't yet hit a really good drive serve. A lot of them are coming off the back wall. Almost feel like he needs to go for a little bit more on his drive serve, get it a little bit lower, and be okay with the second serve rather than allowing that first serve to come off the back wall. Of this game. I didn't see it. Now what is Londa calling for? Is well, he, he saying I a I wet know, ball? I he wants a wet ball. Though. He asked for the wet ball. Official Jennings didn't see it. If he didn't see it, you play on. Yeah, that's tricky because it is wet conditions here in San Antonio. It's been raining all weekend quite hard. Um, and that uh, definitely affects the courts a little bit too. There's a bit of a like metal roof here. So they've had some leaks in other areas of the YMCA. So far, nothing on the court. So both players now are asking him to watch for that, which is good to see. That's the kind of sportsmanship you want to see. It's okay. It, it didn't work. Just keep an eye on that. Skip for Londa is going to tie it up now for Andre. That's serves nine. Ten. Oh, sorry, nine. it's ten. I guess with that wet ball, that was a point for Padilla, so I was behind in my scoring, but it's ten. Londa to shoot. Oh, yeah, where he wants to be? Forehand pinch. All day long, Andre Padilla gonna hit that forehand pinch. So you see he switched up his serve. He's now going down the line instead of that Nick Lob. Let's see if he sticks with it. Looks like it. Seems to be working. Oh, great get. Oh, that's unlucky. Smart play from Londa though. He had Padilla kind of hanging out on the left side of the court. Nice to shoots it to the right side. I'd like to see Londa try something different. He just hits this over and over and over. It's the same serve every time. Great rally here. Oh yeah. Hi. Right. He's gonna get another look. Oh, cute. Great hands from Londa. Andre did well to get that one. He acknowledges Landa's control in the front court. Nice rally. As fans, we enjoy it. As players, we don't. You see players taking a little bit extra time maybe than they should <laughs> to check the court. That was a long rally. A little bit maybe, fatigued. Yeah. Maybe be a strategy for catching your breath. And something you can do if you are the person who's controlled a rally and you've had the other person flying all over the court and they're exhausted, physiologically, they are going to be more depleted in terms of um, ATP. So what that means is they have less immediate energy available and they need oxygen to recover that. And so what you want to do is you want to serve as fast as you can because they're tired and they need time to regroup. And so what you want to do is... That looked good on the camera, sorry. No, you're good. What you want to do is, is take advantage of that. So it's kind of like a battery. You have a 10-second battery, and when you use that 10 seconds up, it takes about three minutes for it to recover. And we don't all use the 10 seconds for the rally. We we'll use a portion of it and slowly deplete it. But if you have a long rally where somebody is really all over the place, they've used a lot of that, and so they're not going to have much in reserve. Use that, serve quickly. If they're tired, they're more likely to make a quick mistake. We also see players using that to control the momentum as well, and it's just like you're saying, you're kind of attacking your opponent when they're down. We see, like, for example, Jake Breidenbeck does that a lot. He'll fire off that momentum going and keep his opponent down. Beautiful from Landa. Tied it up at 11 each. 
11, serving 11. 11-11. You saw there, Londa didn't really hit it too hard. Sometimes players, they try to roll it out as hard as they Took some pace off it, so it slowed the ball down. It didn't bounce back further than it did. So he's going to a lob to the forehand. It's a good one. Three-shot Three rally. Just Point. what he wants to get ahead in this second game. Yeah, that puts him up now. 12-11. Oh, great pickup from Andre. Oh, he almost, he read it. He just couldn't Point. get there in time. 13-11, Andre should take his second time out here. They're going to take a little break to wipe down that court. And he said catch their breath a little bit too. Gives me an opportunity to remind everyone that this is only the first quarterfinal of the day. That means there's three more. Our next quarterfinal will feature Rodrigo Montoya and David Bobby Horn. If you guys want to check out the draw, you can do so by going to bit.ly backslash WRT Alamo draw. We'll get that graphic up on the screen for you because we're bitly obsessed here at the WRT. And don't forget, when you check that out, you'll also see that the semifinals are also tonight at 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. These guys are going to take a quick break and a good timeout, I think, called by Andre Padilla. We'll be right back with more from the World Racquetball Tour. This is the 2016 WRT Alamo City Rondo. Open quarterfinals. Seven. Alex Ronda sitting 13, at 13 against Andre Padilla with 11. So it was interesting watching. Oh, there's Ooh, a nice serve. It was interesting first of game two. watching Padilla came out. It looked like he was on his phone during the timeout, probably getting some 14, opinions 11. or advice from his dad, Fabian. Don't know that, but... A lot of the players will do that because the coaches watch online and then provide some commentary or some suggestions from afar. It's great that we do have some effort there from the coaching staff. Two ace serves in a row after that timeout from Alex Landa to win game two, which makes it 15-11, 15-12. 